5A matchup between the Liberty Hill Panthers and the Cedar Park Timberwolves. I am Jason Hebner, and tonight I'm so honored to be joined by the one and only Jay Sanders. Jace, how you been? Uh, the honor is all mine, Jason. I've been very well. I've been glad to come back and catch this uh, very, very big game. You're right. It is a big game. Cedar Park comes in this game tied at the top of the district with the Leander Lions. Cedar Liberty Hill, on the other hand, right now sitting in the fifth, looking to win this upset the Timberwolves and move in and move up in those district standings. As we know, Jace, those do ref those do uh, lead to your playoff seedings. Yeah, they're they're one spot off right now, but those top four guys are are some big competitors. And I think the biggest thing is it, it's the top five. I mean, that's those are the teams that are going to get the shot. Everybody below is pretty much already out at this point. So if the Panthers can get a win against the team that's above them right now, it'd be a big thing and hopefully shoot them into the playoff spots uh, pretty a soon here. Absolutely right. As we are in the second half of district, a little bit of running out of time for Liberty Hill to get some big wins here. Luckily, they do get to play some big teams at home this time. We get to play Georgetown and Leander at home, as well as tonight's game. Uh, we're glad that you can join us, as most games in Central Texas, if that are on dirt fields, were rained down and canceled, postponed to this weekend or Monday due to some severe storms that rolled through last night and drizzled through today. Luckily, Liberty Hill has a turf field able to play tonight. And Jace, what are you looking excited or what are you looking forward to? Uh, I think the biggest thing is getting able to play, obviously, the first thing. I mean, how much rain and I mean, the hail yesterday was just incredible. So the fact that we're even playing today is pretty spectacular. I give it up to having the turf field and uh, taking good care of that mound out there. But I think the biggest thing I'm looking forward to is just hopefully seeing these bats come alive. I mean, we hit the ball very well against Rouse and just kind of got unlucky here and there. Just, I mean, had some plays not go our way. Had some diving catches by Rouse, some great plays by them. So if we could just hit like we did then, those balls will land. I mean, it's, it's a matter of time, but it, they will, they'll start falling. And if we can just start, start off strong tonight, it'll probably be a, hopefully a good finish for the Panthers. I agree with you 100% as the coaches meeting here at Liberty Hill is just about finished with. Looks like they'll shake hands right now. And we'll head to the PA for starting lineups and national anthem. We were looking live at tonight's game between the Timberwolves of Cedar Park and your Panthers of Liberty Hill. Please welcome the Cedar Park Timberwolves. At third base, number five, Cade Hoyt. At second base, number 13, Gunnar Absent. At shortstop, number 14, Ryder Fernandez. At right field, number six, Cannon McDonald. At left field, number 22, Trent Berber. At DH tonight, number 16, Murray Robinson. At pitcher, number 25, Adam Vaughn. At first base, number 12, Hunter Hemmick. At catcher, number 23, Josh Burks. And at center field, number 11, Darian Sue. And now, your Liberty Hill Varsity Panthers. Number four, Logan Bailey. Number 21, Kobe DeMars. Number 24, Cash Durkin. Number 11, Trent Eller. Number 16, Taylor Gutierrez. Number 13, Everett Huddleston. Number 17, Cole Jefferson. Number 9, Ty Maldonado. Number 19, Kay McCoy. Number 18, Ryan Roden. Number one, Carson Riley. Number six, Lane Roborski. Number 15, Connor Sherburn. Number 22, Tyler Williams. Jacoby Martinez. And now, your Liberty Hill starting lineup. At shortstop, number 12, Ryan Leary. Getting the edge tonight. 
right, number 23, Andon Thomas. At second base, number eight, Jackson Knox. At center field, number five, Logan Dyer. At third base, number 10, Kay Neuschwander. At right field, number seven, Jack Stavinov. At left field, number three, Chase Maxwell. At first base, number 20, Brody Blade. At catcher, number two, Garrett Neely. And on the mound tonight for your Panthers, at pitcher, number 14, Blaze Milo. Hello and welcome back here after the starting lineups and national anthem here at Liberty Hill. If you're just joining us, we're about to get ready for first pitch here tonight. And on the bound tonight for the Liberty Hill Panthers will be number 14, Blaze Milam. Jace, have you had the, have you had the chance to watch Milam pitches here? Yeah, we wa I wa got to watch him in the first game I saw, and i got to be honest, I, I was really, really impressed. I mean, being just a freshman, it, it's pretty impressive what he brings in his stuff. I think the biggest thing is he's got movement and speed. Like he, he's not going to have the highest velocity. He's not going to have the most movement. But the fact that he has both, that can make him a stellar pitcher. And we, we, we saw that in the last game. And I think uh, hope for a good game from him. But I, I like what I saw when I saw him. Yeah, for sure. Milam has a great two-seam uh, curveball combination. He was really good in his first outing of the year against Rouse. Our Panthers were able to win 5-2. to two. He's also got, he got a relief appearance against Cedar Park in their first outing was a very solid in a couple innings of relief pitchers, and he'll look to shut down the Timberwolves tonight. One of the keys to tonight's game for the Liberty Hill Panthers is going to be the offense has just been lacking for the Panthers generally over the years, or over this year, excuse me. I mean, just low score games, and they'll look tonight to increase that score, to increase that scoring capabilities against the state-ranked Timberwolves. Milam on his last warm-up pitch here. And it looks like Garrett Neely will be behind the behind the plate tonight for Liberty Hill, getting the starting nod over Carson Riley. It's a good battery combo right there. And with that throw down from Neely, we will we will get ready for first pitch here. As it looks like Adam Hot stepping into the plate for the Timberwolves. Now batting, Tate Hot. Tate Hot, excuse me. First pitch from Milam. Hot shows bunt, curveball in on the zone for ball one. Interesting start there. I think he wants to try and just get on base here. That, that moves Nunchwander in over there on that third base side. Of course, Nunchwander, an excellent defensive third baseman. Hot here will be swinging. We'll watch a fastball on the outside part of the plate for strike one. Did he do that in the first game, do you happen? Some players just like to put the butt out there on the first pitch. 
Cedar Park is willing to use a small ball. I do know that. And as Milam, pitch. Hot shows bunt there, pulls back on a curveball outside of the zone. I mean, Hot's gotten a little lucky here. The two ones he's shown bunt, it's been curveballs, and kind of came inside and went, out and went out wide. Milam will look to attack back in the zone here. Pitch. That fastball. Little low on the outside half. Worked to count to three and one. It's a good pitch there. He lurked the curveball away and tried to hit that away bottom corner and just couldn't hit it. Milam taking a sign from Neely in the windup. Here's the pitch. That fastball runs a little bit inside and hot will jog down to first base. That was an interesting pitch sequence right there. Got the curveball inside, curveball away, fastball outside, and then fastball inside. Maybe a little bit nervous from the young freshman. He'll look to dial it back here against Absec. The Panthers looking for a ground ball. First pitch. Absec shows bunt. Down the third base line will be foul. As Nunchwander fielded it cleanly for strike one. Yeah, Panthers playing double play depth here, trying to get that quick two outs with the ground ball to in the infield here. But you talked about small ball, and well, um, right away, they're showing bunts and almost got one down there. Yeah, both teams will do whatever it takes tonight to score. This could be a low scoring affair as both teams have very good defensive and pitching staffs. Milan will pick over to play at first base. Hot will be back in time. That's something you've missed this year, Jace. Liberty Hill using a lot of pickoffs, especially to first base, to keep those runners in check. Yeah, well, last year the steal was a, a big problem in the tournament there. Hot goes, able to lay down the bunt to Milam. Milam able to field it cleanly. We'll throw the first to Blay for out number one. Good adjustment over there at first by Blay. Kind of had an outside ball and catch, and he got it. So now, after the sacrifice bunt from Absec, Hot on second base and brings up Ryder Hernandez. Hernandez, Jace, as you may know, is the Timberwolves quarterback yep. during football season. Led the Timberwolves to a state playoff game this year. We're on four, I'm, I'm actually not sure what they did. It's blanking my mind right now. He's at the plate now. Hot runner goes. That ball is hit in the left, deep left field. Dyer coming over to make the catch. He'll have a chance at two here. Hot will be back at second base. And that will be two outs for Liberty Hill. I'm being informed Cedar Park lost in the state playoff game in the 5A D1 football game to Denton Ryan, another perennial powerhouse at that football level. Well, must have an arm, but he's got a bat there. That was a really solid shot there. But Dyer with speed able to get over to it and cover it for out number two. Now with two outs, McDonald steps into the plate, the cleanup hitter for the Timberwolves tonight. Milam checks hot, goes to the plate. No, decides to pick, keep his runner in check there. Smart play, hot, the leadoff batter, presumably with speed. A single for the Timberwolves could be trouble here for Liberty Hill. Keeping him close over there in second. Milam, first pitch to McDonald. Fastball. Appears to be a little low. I think he's just trying to get that low part of the strike zone. He just can't find it just yet. He'll get it soon enough. It's just trying to find it real quick. Obviously, like good each umpire zone is going to be different. So, And, of course, it's a good place to find once you can find it. 1-0 count to McDonald. Pitch from Nyla here. Grounded to Knox. Knox able to field it cleanly. We'll throw over to first for out number three. Three outs here in the top of the first, and we'll head to the bottom of the first where Liberty Hill will attempt to score first. You're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Bike Line. Honey, isn't it amazing? What? The, the sacrifice, the dedication, the grit. I mean, they really set an example, don't they? Oh, well, no question. Today's high school athletes are truly special. Not the athletes. Ooh. The officials. Oh. Today's student athletes are truly special. But there's something pretty great about the men and women who officiate their games, too. Like the way they're giving back to their communities. Officiating is a terrific way to stay in shape, meet new people, and stay connected to the game you love. But the biggest reason of all? We need more qualified high school officials here in Texas. And without them, the rest of us would have a whole lot less to cheer about. High school games need officials. High school sports need you. 
Oh, yeah. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Well, welcome back here to Liberty Hill High School Panther Baseball Field where Adam Vaughn hits the mound for the Timberwolves. Vaughn pitched against the Panthers on his, their, his last outing, was able to hold them to a few runs, and Cedar Park was able to beat the Panthers in their first district matchup at Jay Seaver Field in Cedar Park. Chase, what do you see out of Vaughn early here? Well, he's got some length to him. I mean, six foot, 210, junior. His pitching motion is a, a, a bit interesting. Uh, I don't really know if there's a comparison to it, but I definitely think he's a, just, just interesting. A little um, bit deceiving for sure. Yeah, kind of throws that arm back and where you can't see the ball pretty much the entire way. And it looks like we'll get ready for Ryan Leary, a Panther leadoff batter to head to the plate. Leary has been hitting hot lately, has found some success at the plate by swinging early. Really, this whole Panther team has found some success in being aggressive at the plate, and we'll look to continue that tonight against the Timberwolves. Vaughn working from the stretch. Set now. First pitch to Leary. That one grounded up the middle. Leary will have run it out here. Second baseman makes able not able to make the play. Will throw it into the Timberwolf dugout, and Leary will reach first on a leadoff error from the Timberwolves. Yeah, just that high chopper, and second baseman lost his hat, trying to run in there, and on the run, it's a hard throw to make, so. Yeah, it looks like Abzik had a little bit of difficulty there, had to rush the throw to beat the fast Leary, who was running straight out of the box, and now Liberty Hill have a runner on first base for Andon Thomas. Thomas, the lefty junior, able to impact a game with one swing. He'll face Vaughn for the first time this season. First pitch to Thomas. Now it's past the catcher. Leary will be up at second easily. I tell you, I mean, I don't think the way this is going, this is exactly the start that you would expect, but I'll definitely tell you it's what they want. They have a runner on second with nobody out and a batter up at the plate who can do some damage. And Jace, I'd be surprised here if Thomas doesn't lay down a bunt. It's been the Panthers' go-to runner on second base. No outs. Thomas shows bunt. Not able to lay it down. Into the stands, not able to be caught, sadly. I think most of the time when you think a guy on second, nobody out, you think, oh, he had a double, or got a single and then stole the bag. Not Two uh, errors for error. the yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I said, maybe not the start they were expecting, but definitely the start they wanted. Yeah, now a 1-1 one, one count to Thomas. He'll try to lay down the bunt again here to get Leary over to third with one out, and hopefully the Panthers behind him and Knox and Dyer can drive him in. Shows bunt, able... Not able to lay that one down. Foul down the third baseline. And now bring Thomas to one and two. He'll be swinging here. That one kind of on the outside half. A hard pitch to bunt, but if you ask Gannon, I bet you he would have told you. He's tried to lay it down. Should have gotten down. Now Thomas will be swinging. He'll look to put something in play, preferably to the right side of the infield. So uh, Leary, excuse me, can move to third. Pitch from Vaughn. Popped up by Thomas. Catcher going back on it. Calls it. Unable to make the play. The wind bringing that one back here. Strong wind out of the Panther stands here, or down by the Panther dugout. Blew that ball back here, and the catcher for the Timberwolves, Brett's able, unable to make the play. It's a good two-strike approach. I mean, he saw it, he went for it, just kind of got on the lower part of the bat and went straight up. But. Yeah, Thomas will have a second chance here with a runner in scoring position. Liberty Hill looking to strike first in this District 25-5A matchup. Pitch from Vaughn. That one's fouled off by Thomas. When you talk about the win, uh, that's going to help left-handed left, field, left, left -handed hitters tonight as it's going straight out to left field. You get a ball hooking down that line, probably going to get some extra lift distance on that. Left-handed hitters in this Panther lineup tonight will be Thomas, Dyer, and Stavanoa, as well as Belay. Four lefties in this lineup tonight for the Panthers. If you're just joining us, I'm Jason Hevener, along with Jay Sanders, joining us for this district matchup, the former voice of the Panthers. Pitch from Vaughn to Thomas. Curveball hit hard down the right field line. Thomas doing a great job of staying alive here against Vaughn. Like I said, great two-strike approach. He's getting that hands in quick, making sure that bat's over the plate for a long time, making sure if 
You know, if the ball's there, he's going to hit it. Thomas now back in the box, looking to win this battle. Vaughn, pitch. Fastball, fouled back again by Thomas. Again and again, just kind of shorten up the swing, and he's doing exactly what you want if you got a one-two count with the guy on second. You want to fight. This is a fourth or fifth consecutive foul ball from Thomas. And I think the one person to maybe have about this is Jackson Knox, because he's getting a really good look here at this pitcher. All of his pitches are coming in play right now, even on a one-two count. One-two to Thomas. Leary on second base for Liberty Hill. Vaughn checks Leary. Pitch to Thomas. <laughs> Fastball. Go, go, Rounded go, down go, the first base line. Error at first base. Thomas going to have a chance to beat that one out. He was first called safe, then out by the field umpire. And it looks like he'll be out for out number one. Yeah, he kind of started his little safe motion and quickly changed to out. As a close play over there, but I, I think he got the call right. I think he was out just by a hair. But he did his job. Did exactly what he needed to get that guy over to third base. And one out, you got a guy on third. I think you take that. Yeah, Thomas did do a great job moving Leary over third base. Now with one out, Jackson knocks at the plate for Liberty Hill, looking to strike first with his senior teammate, Ryan Leary, on third base. Vaughn, first pitch to Knox. At fastball, outside for ball number one. Got some zip on that one. I don't know if he was frustrated with losing the two strikes trying to get the strikeout, but puts an extra infield in. Vaughn set, pitch. That fastball finds his zone, brings the count to one and one. Well, that's a usual one, Knox, trying to make sure he waits his pitcher out. You Knox. see him take a lot of first strikes. I don't know why, but he likes it. That pitch knocks a curveball in the dirt. Works the count to two and one. Some guys you'll see, though. Swing on the first pitch. Knox, he always likes to give maybe a strike in there before he swings. Unless he really likes it. Knox is a very smart hitter, and he'll look to be smart here. Against Vaughn, looking to strike first for Liberty Hill. Pitch, that fastball, high and away. Brings the count to three and one. You got it, Vaughn, come on! Liberty Hill with a runner on third base, and Ryan Leary, after a few Timberwolf errors, will look to strike first with Knox at the plate. That pitch, fouled back into the parking lot. Brings the count to full. Well, big pitch early, already in the start of the game here. Runs are going to be at a premium tonight, I feel. Full count to Knox. Grounded to the shortstop. Leary coming home. To play at the plate. Leary will be out. And Knox will reach base on the fielder's choice. He was running on contact there. Timberwolves were playing in there. May have helped the shortstop, Hernandez, get Leary out after a great throw to the catcher. Brett's to get Leary up the plate. Yeah, good hit ball. I mean, what's what you want to do is put it in play. Just running on contact and great play by the shortstop, uh, Hernandez, to get him in. Now the sophomore Logan Dyer with Jackson Knox on first base steps into the box. First pitch, fastball down and away for ball number one. Dyer taking a little bit of time here. Now back up at the plate. Brings the count to 1-0. Oh. Pitch from Vaughn. That fastball fouled back as Knox was going. We'll work the count to 1-1. One one. A, a lot of room out there for the ball to drop, but watching that center fielder. Last pitch he was shaded to his right. Now he's gone back to his left. So he's got a big right center gap, it looks like. Dyer, a good hitter can put some damage onto this Timberwolf defense. That one, a fastball, hits the outside corner, brings the count to one and two. That's a pitch you can't really do much about. A fastball, got the outside half, almost right on the corner, I would say. Now with two outs here in the bottom of the first, Liberty Hill looking to keep this inning going with Logan Dyer at the plate. Vaughn, set, checks Knox, goes to the plate. Knox is running, Dyer fouls it off. Second time, Knox has had to go back to first after trying to yeah. steal. Pick two pitches to steal on, those are the two that he's fouled off. Vaughn, now set. 
One two count pitch to Dyer there. Fouled back by Dyer. Jace, even if Liberty Hill isn't having great success at the plate, they are seeing him well, fouling off a lot of pitches, and they'll, in their second or third at bats, will lead to some success. Well, I think the biggest thing here is, I mean, hopefully this inning can continue going, but they have seen a bunch of pitches uh, from Vaughn already, which is a big thing. Pick back. Knox is back in time there. That was a quick pick there, but luckily Knox. He's got the baseball IQ over there. He knows what's going on. Now Vaughn's set. 1-2 count for Dyer. Pitch here. There's a fastball outside. Brings the count to 2-2. Two and two. How much did Vaughn pitch in the last game? He pitched the entire game? I believe he pitched five or six innings. Well, right. Keep going like this. He won't pitch more than probably like four. Pitch. Knox goes. Grounded up the middle. That'll be an easy play for Absec at second base. With that third out, we'll head to the top of the second inning. I am Jason Hebner, joined alongside by Jace Andrews, and you are listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Bike Live. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student athletes right here in Texas. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result? It transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports. There's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Welcome back here to Liberty Hill High School, where Liberty Hill and Cedar Park Timberwolves are currently tied at nothing here in this District 25 5A matchup. A really big game here for Liberty Hill if they're able to win. Puts them right back in the playoff standings as Blaze Milam is back on the mound for Liberty Hill. Looks like he'll face Adam Verver to lead off the top of the second inning here. First pitch for Milam. Trey Verver. Sorry. I'm wanting to say everyone's Adam tonight, Jace. Yes. <laughs> uh, who's up next? I think it's Adam. We'll find out. First pitch to Verver was fouled back. Four strike one, and here's the second pitch for Milam. That curveball. A little bit on the inside half there works it to one and one. I think he's just not having great control of his curveball just yet. He's getting it closer and closer to the inside half. And once he gets it, it's going to be a great pitch, but just trying to sneak it in right now. That pitch from Milam grounded hardly to Noonchwanner. Noonchwanner, great play. Able to throw it across the diamond to Blay for out number one. You know, I tell you, I, I saw a little bit of Noonchwanner last year, and I've seen him a couple times this year. I, I really like him over at third base. Quick reactions, good arm. Not to mention, he's got, got, got some bad at him, too. Nunchwander, a great defensive third baseman, which is why he's really earned the starting role in this district play here. As Robinson in the box now. And his first pitch from Milam is a fastball in there for strike one. Robinson, a, a first lefty in this Timberwolf lineup, takes his pitch two here. Ground it to Knox. Knox able to field it cleanly. Will make the throw over to Blay at first for out number two. Jace Milam tonight doing a great job of pitching to contact. We've already seen a lot of ground ball out I was, today. I was actually just about to say, I think he's going to have as many pitches as Vaughn in the first inning as he's going to have in the, the two innings. So doing a great job at just getting them to hit the ball. I mean, we saw that first first at that way walked him, but since then, great pitching going on here for Milam. Now Hewitt at the bat for the Timberwolves as he'll call time at the plate with two outs here in the top half of the second inning. First pitch to Hewitt. Fastball in there for strike one. I told you to get that fastball going. That was it right there. Got that left corner inside part of the plate. Can't do much better than that. Now Milam, second pitch. Fastball. Runs a little bit inside. Works count to one and one. But you're absolutely correct, Jace. Milam, there's a reason he's been used so much in this district season. I mean, 
He's just a great pitcher. I like his motion too. Very smooth. Now, oh, Hewitt will call time there as Milam had oh. just started his windup. I say smooth and then of course uh, stops it right there. But like I said, very fluid, nice, and he works from the windup when you're supposed to work from the windup, unlike uh, Vaughn. That pitch here, curveball. Foul down the right field line, weakly, by Hewitt. Brings the count to one and two, with two outs here in the top of the second inning. Okay, I mean, he may have not gotten a swing on missing that, but he buckled the batter right there. He kind of had to fight off that pitch. Just like great movement on that pitch. Now, his best curveball tonight. Now one-two count. Milam will look to retire Hewitt here. Pitch. High fastball. Gets Hewitt to chase for out number three. We'll stay right here as we'd like to thank the presenting sponsor of Vibe Live this spring in Academy Sports and Outdoors. For all the ways you love to play, Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to gear up and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your local Academy store. Gear up this spring at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Well, going back to that last inning, I, I, I gotta say, Milam was nasty. He had, he had it all working. He had the fastball and then the pitch selection. He had to throw a high fastball in the first two innings. Just struck out the guy right there to get him into the bottom of the second, get the Panthers back, back on offense. And Man, I gotta tell you, I, I'm impressed. I like what I'm seeing so far. I think, uh, I think as long as he's out there and as long as he's got it going, I, it'll be a tough night for those uh, Cedar Park players to get it going. I, I'd have to agree with you. I think this is the best Milan has looked since that Rouse game, or if you were here for that Rouse game, you know the Panthers beat then state-ranked Rouse 5-2, to two, primarily based off a great pitching performance from the young pitcher. I mean, if Milam is dealing tonight, which right now looks like he is, I mean, this could be a very... This could be a night for a potential upset here from in Liberty Hill. Uh, I think the biggest thing is you can always tell how a pitcher's going to do by his first three innings. So if he can go have another clean one out there, and so we got a pretty good, uh, pretty good shot at him doing well for the rest of the night for as long as he's on the mound. And if we had high school fantasy baseball, I mean, might would be a great pick. I mean, he's been very efficient tonight. Oh, very. really going to keep that pitch count low, and he could work the distance here tonight. I think, I think, and I think that's the biggest thing is he works a good three innings along with his pitch count being very stable. And he's just a freshman, so we'll have to see how long he's going to be left out there. But I'll tell you, I like the way this is going so far. Now it's time to get some runs. Now we're in the bottom of the second. I'll change it on your scoreboard right now for all you viewers at home. As Cade Nunschwander's at the plate. Thank you, Jace. First pitch from Vaughn. It's a fastball outside for strike one. You have to do bots. There you gotcha. go. Now we got 0-1 count to Nunschwander. Vaughn. Pitch. That fastball fouled straight back. Very close to our crowd, Mike. You probably heard that one there. May have scared you a little bit. Sorry for that. Now where you got these cinder block walls, the sky is painted purple with padding. Now an 0-2 count. Nunschwander will have to defend here against Vaughn, the Timberwolf ace. Pitch. That curveball swung on and chased by Nunschwander. And that'll be out number one. Okay, that was just a good pitch right there. I mean, you, it's going to be hard to hit that one. I, I, I got I to gotta give that one to the pitcher. Yeah, talking about pitch sequence, Vaughn, two fastballs, goes to the curveball outside. That's, very, that's so hard to ch not chase yeah. as a batter. Nunschwander fell to it, and it'll be out number one for Liberty Hill, which brings up Jack Stavanoa. You see that ball coming in high, and you're like, oh, fastball again, and just drops. Stavanoa, first pitch from Vaughn. That fastball is inside, brings the count to 1-0. and oh. Stavanoa has been hot at the plate recently, having a couple of doubles, a few singles, and just always seeming to be on base for the Panthers. He'll look to continue that against Vaughn tonight. As that pitch is low, brings the count to 2-0. and oh. Two zero for Stavanoa. Vaughn back on the rubber. Now set. Here's the pitch. That fastball is high. Brings the count to three and zero. Three zero count. Stavanoa. Here's the pitch from Vaughn. That fastball called strike. Got that outside half, just barely, I guess. I think I would have given that one a ball, but again. A good pitch on the outside half and just gotta kind of sneak it in there. Stavanoa, here's the pitch from Vaughn. 
That one runs out of the zone. Stavano will jog down to first base, and Liberty Hill will have another base runner here. Bring in number three, Chase Maxwell, the sophomore left fielder. Maxwell, a pretty good hitter at the plate. Very good defensively in left field. He'll look to start something early here for Liberty Hill against the state-ranked Timberwolves. Stavano on first base after the walk. Vaughn from the stretch. First pitch to Maxwell. It's high and inside, and Maxwell chases it for strike one. I think he came out there. I, I, I'm going to swing at this first pitch no matter what. Swing to me. Liked it and turned his body and hands went with it. That's a quick pick. Stavano back in time. Second time Vaughn has used that quick pick tonight. Yeah, he used it earlier against Knox. And hasn't worked either time, but I tell you, it is quick. Now he'll do it again. Stavano back in time. There's two things with that, though. Is he does it so quick, he's either going to catch the runner lacking or he's going to throw it away. So He does it a third time. Stavano, for the third time, is back in time. That may just be his regular pick move. Could he be. Does pitch from the stretch, so. It's true. Vaughn now. Pitch to Maxwell. Ooh. Curveball inside. Hits off his left shoulder. Yeah. Maxwell will jog down to first base. You know, we, we can see it from here in the press box. Maxwell knew that one hit him. Was going to see if the umpire gave it to him. Hey, came up on his light, left shoulder. and Kind of turned back trying to let it. <laughs> hoping he wouldn't come in and get him, but I'm sure he'll take a tick on the... Uh, little nick on the shoulder for a first base. Now runners on first and second for Liberty Hill. Savino on second base, Maxwell on first after two walks from Vaughn. And he'll bring up Brody Blay, the first baseman tonight. Yeah, having a couple lefties in this lineup might be a good deal. The gap between right and center, and the right center gap is just is really big right now. You just get one in that gap. You probably got a good shot at scoring both these runs. Vaughn set, first pitch to Blay. It's a cur uh, fastball, excuse me, inside. We'll work the count to 1-0. If I'm Liberty Hill right now, I'm going to make Vaughn throw me a strike. Yeah. Struggled with his control in this bottom half of the second inning with Blay at the plate right now. Pitch. That one's in the middle. Blay swung through it. 1-1 one, one count. Vaughn taking a sign from Brett's, his catcher. Now set, pitch to Blay. That one way outside, brings the count to two and one. Oh, well, he'll throw a fastball first strike and then he'll lose one on the far outside. So just gotta see. Make him be consistent. Two one count. Vaughn checks Stavano, goes to the plate. That one fouled back by Blay. Blay not happy with himself. Tell you what. Fastball does have a little bit of movement to it. One time I saw, it, I think the, last, the one that Blaze swung through it went up. That one kind of came inside a bit. Two-two count for Blaze with runners on first and second for Liberty Hill, looking to score here in the bottom of the second. Pitch is a fastball in the dirt, and that'll work the count to full for Brody Blaze. Again, big pitches early in this game for Vaughn. Vaughn looking to keep Liberty Hill at zero. However, Liberty Hill looking to score first against the state ranked Timberwolves. This pitch, it's a fastball outside, chased by Blay for out number two. Hey, you can't leave that one to the umpire. I don't, I don't blame Blay at all for that, for going for it. It's a high fastball. And if you let it go into strike, it's awful, but it's one hard to hit, one ball that's hard to hit. And with that, after that Blay strikeout, We'll head to Garrett Neely, the nine-hole hitter tonight. Also tonight's starting catcher. He's been switching starting role, starting positions with Carson Riley, the other Panther catcher. He'll look to capitalize in his minimized plate appearance this night. First pitch, grounded hard to the shortstop, right at him. And that'll be out number three. And we'll head to the third inning here at Liberty Hill. You're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Bike Live. This is what matters. This is beyond X's and O's. This is the difference mutual respect makes. This is what character looks like. This is what defines us in Texas. This is sportsmanship. School sports, it's not the outcome that matters most, but the way the games are played. 
This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Welcome back here to Liberty Hill in this District 25-5A matchup tied up through two innings here between your Liberty Hill Panthers and the Cedar Park Timberwolves. Jace, what have you seen so far and what do you like from the Panthers? Well, uh, first of all, I like Blaze Milam. I think he's doing a fantastic, a fantastic job out there on the mound. I hope to see it continued here. Uh, like I said, three innings is where you can really tell where a pitcher's going to go. That means he's gone through the lineup at least once, so big thing is hopefully goes a clean inning here and I like the contact we're putting on the bat we're, we're hitting the ball and strong hits too I mean that that ball hit there by Garrett was not a uh, soft hit ball it was hard so they'll start getting soon enough just got to keep the keep the pressure on yeah and from our perspective Liberty Hills definitely won this game two innings where they could had could have scored if something went right for them where Cedar Park has ultimately been shut down first pitch from Milam here to Brett's it's a fastball Catches the outside half for strike one. Oh, one one count to Bretts. Pitch here. That one grounded to Nunchwander. Makes a great play. And will throw it across the diamond. Four out number one. Nunchwander having a clinic tonight. <laughs> He's just saying, you know, a ball is not going to get past me tonight. And he has shown that. A couple of hard hit balls. And that one took a weird hop. Still got it. And a nice spin throw over to Blay at first. Yeah, Nunchwander is an absolutely exceptional fielder there at third base. And there's a big reason why that the sophomore has gotten those district starting nods. And he'll look to stay there for the next couple of years. Milam now facing Sue. First pitch. Curveball outside. Now, Jace, you weren't there at the first Cedar Park matchup. But all I can, re I can remember from Sue here is he reached three times all singles to right field. Oh. Well, that's interesting. So we'll look for that here against Milam. That one fouled back, and I'll be a 1-1 count. To right field, so he's going opposite. Hit it right through the hole between Blay and Knox. So grounders. Consecutive time, little line drive line ground drives. balls. Gotcha. And here's a pitch from Milam. That one's blooped up the middle. J Knox oh. and Knox going out for it, unable to make the catch. And Sue will reach as the number nine hole hitter and bring up Hot for the Timberwolves. Sue for the Timberwolves is a great nine hole hitter as he always seems to reach base in my eyes. A great contact hitter and he'll reach first for the Timberwolves here in the top of the third. With one out, Liberty Hill will look for a ground ball in double play depth here for Hot, the Timberwolves leadoff hitter. Sue with speed could steal. Neely will have a good arm behind the plate. They'll pick Sue back in time. Okay. Milam takes his sign from Neely. Set now. First pitch to Hot. Popped high down the right field line. Looks to be out of play as Blay stops chasing it. Cade Hot at the plate with an 0-1 count facing the freshman pitcher for Liberty Hill, Blaze Milam. Pitch. That one. A little off the zone. Works the count to 1-1. One and one. It's a good frame there by Neely. Kind of got that pitch in. Pulled it back. Just a few inches off the plate. A little bit more in. And that would have been strike two for sure. 1-1 one, one count for Hot. They'll pick first. Sue back in time. Liberty Hill trying to keep Sue in check with speed on the base pass. Milam now set. Pitch to the plate. Sue goes. Neely. Good throw. And Sue will be safe at second base. 
that's a good slide. I think I got to attribute a great throw, great tag, got a good jump, had a good slide. Now, after that, that curveball, there was called low. We'll work the count to two and one. Hot will have a runner in scoring position in Sioux. Another thing there, throwing a curveball. It's going to be a little slower getting to the plate. Milam checks Sue, goes to Hot. Hot shows Bunt, able to lay a good one down the third baseline. Nunes will let go foul, and now bring the count to two and two. Smart there. Tried to put it on. That was a good bunt. Just couldn't keep it fair. Now a 2-2 count. Hot will for sure be swinging, and he'll look to add an RBI to his stat chart with a single. I think the good thing there is he gives them an extra strike now, so they can get one pitch and have two outs instead of one with the runner on second. Them. So big difference from one to two when you get the runner out there. Now a 2-2 count. Liberty Hill looking to retire hot here and keep the score at zero for the Timberwolves. Pitch. That one hit hard down the third baseline. Foul. Hot will keep his count at a two and two. I'll tell you what, from what I've seen, uh, these Timberwolves are going to keep Nunchwander at third base busy all night. They're hitting that ball and rocketing straight to him, button it over to him. I mean, he's made three plays already and we're barely into the third inning. Certainly, Nunchwander will be up for the task. Milam checks Sue, goes to the plate. That curveball hit weakly into left field. Maxwell coming in on it, unable to make the dying play. Sue will score easily. Hot is heading for third base here. Hot with a stand-up triple after Maxwell unable to make the diving catch in left field. Timberwolves now lead this game one to nothing. That's the thing about the dive, it's an all or nothing play. And just kind of a dinker and I'm sure he wants to catch that ball, wants to get him in, but. Yeah, Milan did a great job of jamming Hot there. Hot just able to put enough brute strength on it to get into left field. Maxwell made the attempted the diving catch, unable to make it. And Timberwolves will now lead this game. Now at the plate is Absec. First pitch from Milam was a little bit high for ball one. Liberty Hill looking to minimize the damage here in the top of the third inning. Milam working from the stretch. Pitch. That one. Outside brings the count to 2-0. and oh. Milam really looking to retire Absic here. That one grounded to Leary. They're able to make the play, check his runner at third, and throw to Blay for out number two. No. Good job by Leary there to check uh, Hot at third base, keep him there, and throw across the diamond to get two outs. And Liberty Hill with a little more breathing room now as Ryder Hernandez steps to the plate. Took the words out of my mouth. I think the biggest thing getting that second out. Gets you a little bit more comfortable on the mound. You, you know, one pitch can get you out of the setting with only one on the board. And if you remember, Hernandez in his last at bat flew out into that deep left center field area. Dyer able to go back and make the catch for out three in the top inning. It's also on that first pitch, so I think a uh, smart pitch there by Milam to throw him a curveball, see if he'd go for it. So after that curveball outside, Hernandez is a 1 0 count with a runner in scoring position, looking to extend the Timberwolf lead. Pitch for Milam. Fastball fouled back, brings count to 1-1. One one. On the other hand of that, Liberty Hill looking to keep that score at 1-0 and, oh and rally back here on the bottom half of this inning with their bats. Like I said, they've been putting good contact and they'll have the top of the order up, so just trying to get out of this inning with just the one run on the board. Milan checks his runner, goes to the plate. That curveball, good block by Neely. That curveball in the dirt there. Brings the count to 2-1 and one for Hernandez. Liking the pitch sequence so far right now. Liberty Hill has a great pitching coach in Kyle Bisher. He keeps the Timberwolf batters on their toes tonight. That fastball runs a little high. We'll bring the count to three and one. Milan will have to attack the strike zone here. I think it's going to be an attack pitch here for both batter and pitcher. They're both going to go out of here. Just a guess, but we'll see what happens. Hernandez will call time as they had a little stare down on the mound from Milam. Like I said, I think it's going to be a challenge pitch here. Three one count to Hernandez. Pitch from Milam. Curveball. Oh, a little low. And Hernandez will jog down to first base. 
The Timberwolves now with runners on the corners for their cleanup hitter, McDonald. That one I did not expect. I, I, I thought a fastball would be coming, trying to challenge him, trying to see if he can get it, but curveball's the move there. Big news is still only one pitch away from getting out of this inning. Walk really doesn't mean too much as long as you can get this one out. Liberty Hill will like to retire McDonald here. Milam will pick first, or pick third, excuse me. He'll look at first base. Keeping his runners in check. I think that one was just trying to see if he could get Hernandez over there sleeping. Absolutely right. Checks Hernandez now before coming set. Set. Pitch to the plate. First pitch, McDonald grounded to Leary. Leary will feel it cleanly. Toss it to Knox at second base for out number two, out number three, after a little bobble there on the flip from Leary. Yeah, a little flip, and Knox, I think, just grabbed it in time to get the out. So. Good to come out of there alive with just the one run put on uh, put on the board for the Timberwolves. We will take a short 30-second break here and be back for the bottom half of this inning. I am Jason Heemer, joined alongside Jay Sanders for this District 25-5A matchup. You are listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. I just said okay. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk-off home runs on the back. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From the cross to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Vibe Sports. BYP. Welcome back here to Liberty Hill. Uh, Jace, you saw in that top half of the third inning, Cedar Park able to score. What are you looking for for Liberty Hill to respond here in the bottom half of this third inning? Exactly that, a response, something. Get something going. I, don't, I mean, I don't even know if it has to be a run. Obviously, that'd be, the, that'd be what you want. You want to tie this game up right away. Make sure you keep it close the entire way. But I think the big thing is just try and keep the pressure on. Get a couple hits going, trying to, again, make Vaughn pitch. I think that's the biggest thing. And if they can do that, They'll get it going. Hard hit balls will soon fall, and hopefully the Panthers can put some runs on the boards here very soon. And Leary will look to put some runs here for the Panthers on the, trying to get a leadoff base runner here in the bottom half of this third inning. Facing Adam Vaughn for the second time tonight. First pitch, fastball, gets by Bretts, the catcher, and Leary will start with a 1-0 count. I think the biggest thing to look at is, although it's 1-0, Panthers are at the leadoff from the top of the third, which is always a good sign, meaning you got some guys on base and you hit the ball hard. Vaughn now, second pitch to Leary. It's a fastball grounded weakly. Leary will be running it. Third baseman will field it, and he'll be make the play at first base for out number one. Well, last time Leary came up, he bounced to the second baseman who couldn't make the play that time. Third baseman, eh, hot. He could. Yeah, hot, able to make that play, able to field it in front of Hernandez. Smart play, throw it across the diamond to his first baseman, Hewitt, for out number one. Now Thomas will be at the plate looking to start something for the Panthers. You know, I'm really finding it interesting how the center fielder plays lefties because some of them, he's going to that, shading that, that right center gap. But some players, he's going back to the left. As that first pitch to Thomas was outside for ball one. Thomas will look. Thomas always has the capability to change this ball game with one swing. Will look to start something for Liberty Hill in this at bat. That fastball finds his zone, works the count to one and one. I caught the strike zone low there. Vaughn set on the mound. Pitch. Down grounded weakly back to Vaughn. Thomas will run it out. Vaughn will throw over to first base. Four. Out number two. Hewitt had to put the tag on Thomas there. Yeah, it was kind of right in front of him, just a throw. And Thomas trying to do a little juke move, but I mean, when the guy's right in front of you, it's a little hard to do much. Thomas prefers to tackle them. Yes. The middle linebacker for this Panther football team. Received multiple D1 offers, and he'll be playing at the next level in a couple of years. Yeah, I think if he had the option, he would have just ran through him if he could. But uh, fortunately, I don't think that would have worked in this one. Two early ground outs here in the bottom of the third. Brings up Jackson Knox facing Vaughn for a second time. As a first pitch fastball, unable to find the zone. I think the goodness of the Panthers here is still getting the C Vaughn. And two out rally here could 
put something together, you got a good part of your order to start something. And that fastball is high. Now a 2-0 count, four knocks. It's looking like my friend Jace here said to start a two-out rally. So that fastball fouled straight back, brings the count to two and one. We've had a couple of those already in this game. When you see those, you know, you, you just missed that ball. You can get your bat a little up or a little through the zone just a bit quicker, and uh, you're probably hitting that ball pretty far away. Vaughn, here's the pitch. It's hit high down the right field line. Hewitt going after it, and that ball is out of play. And I'll bring the count to two and two. Well, I'm a bit off topic here, but I will say uh, one thing Liberty Hills facility has done right is making sure there's a large area of grass over on that right field side before the parking lot. I mean, a lot of places that's going to hit a car, but Liberty Hill now just get get right in that damp ground. I am thankful myself. I'm not wanting any broken windshields here at Panther Stadium. Pitch from Vaughn to Knox here. The curveball called strike three on the outside half for out number three. And we are going to head to the fourth inning. The Timberwolves lead one to nothing in this District 25-5A matchup over the Liberty Hill Panthers. You're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. Meet Josh. Hi, everybody. Josh is a high school basketball player, solid shooter, great teammate. Hey, don't forget my tenacious D. And he's my son. Uh -huh. So what does Josh do to be the best basketball player he can be? I play tennis. Studies show that student athletes here in Texas who play more than one high school sport are more likely to excel. Tennis does more than improve Josh's condition. It gives him a fresh competitive outlet, reduces the risk of injury by cross training, and introduces him to different coaching techniques and new friends. Don't get me wrong, hoops are my first love. Tennis just gives me a little break. So when the new season begins, Josh isn't burned out on basketball. He's eager to play, and you can see the difference yeah, right in now. this game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Milam back on the mound for the Panthers. And he'll face here in the top of the fourth inning. He'll face Verver, the leadoff batter for the Timberwolves. Liberty Hill looking to keep the Timberwolves lead at one. And they'll look to respond in these later innings here. First pitch fouled weakly. Out of play down the right field line here. Well, after, I'm not, I'm not even going to say a rough inning from the last inning because it was really good. It's just, again, just that little dinker. Oh, great curveball there from Milam. Wow. Well, like I said, I, he's got it going. And like, <laughs> just that little dinker from Hot. And that's about it tonight. That's all, he's, that's all he's given up. That one buckled my knees and I'm in the press box. <laughs> this pitch from Milam here. Fastball, a little off the plate. Good 0-2 count pitch. Milam trying to get Verver to chase. Pitch from Milam. Popped up weakly down the right field line. Looks to be out of play again. Nearly giving up chase at the wall. That was a good 1-2 pitch there. I think it may have been... We a change up, a little slow coming in. Now the one two count to Verver. Milam will attack him here. Looks like a high fastball. That one way too high. Brings the count to two and two. That curveball outside brings the count to three and two. That's a good pitch right there, trying to get him to chase. And now the 3-2 count, trying to put the ball in strike zone. Milam winds up, pitch. That fastball hit weakly into left center field. M My Maxwell coming in on it, unable to make the catch as it falls in front of him. And Verver will have a leadoff little bloop single into left field. You know, the, the inside fastball is just kind of back to bite tonight. He's throwing great pitches, but they're just kind of muscling him into the left field area and just kind of dropping in. Now the Panther defense will face Robinson hitting for the pitcher Adam Vaughn tonight. Checks Fervor on first, now set. Milan pitch to McDonald. Robinson, excuse me. 
That is a ground ball fouled. Fouled down the first baseline into the Timberwolves dugout. Will bring the count to 0 and 1. Quick thing here, try and keep that ball in the lower part of the plate. Maybe you can get one to get rolled up nicely for it for a double play. Exactly that. Liberty Hill looking for a ground ball here from Robinson. Milam will pick just to keep Verver in check there at first base. Yeah, I think that was just Blaze letting him know over there, hey, I, I see you. I'm not going to let you go by the wayside. Now he'll actually pick first. Verver. Back in time with that one, too. Milo now set, working to Robinson. Pitch, Verver goes. A little hit and run as Robinson fouls that one out of play. Jace, you think that hit and run there was designed or you think it was a coincidence? Nobody out, up by one. Uh, I'll go with design. I put my bets there too. Now, now an 0-2 count to Robinson. Pitch. Grounded weakly to Noonchwander. Noonchwander will throw across the diamond for out number one. As Blay threw it over to second base to keep Verver from advancing there. I think that's a kind of a slow bounce there. You aren't going to get it to second in time. I could play with Noonchwander just take the, take the out. Yeah, very smart play. If he goes to second base and second base is safe, they're not going to get to play at first. You'd rather get the one guaranteed than the maybe one. And that ground out by Robinson will bring up Hewitt, the Timberwolf first baseman, as he'll look to drive in Verver at second base. Milam, first pitch to Hewitt. There's a curveball popped way up. Knox calling it off. Able to make the catch for out number two. Good pitch there, first pitch curveball. Um, Hewitt just straight under it, sent it way up in the air. Knox able to call it off, make the catch. Yeah, I think he may have thought it didn't have as much movement as it actually did, and we swung under it. Yeah, now a two outs here in the top of the fourth. Brings up Brett to the plate, first pitch from Milam. Fastball in the dirt. Runner's going to be caught in a run down here. Neely not wanting to throw the ball. He'll get a little earful there. That's a situation where as soon as he goes back to second, you got to throw it down there. Yes. You got the guy in between second and third. Probably smart to throw second, but two outs here, not going to be that big a deal. Just get the out. And we'll be all fine. A 1-0 count after that fastball in the dirt. Milam set. Pitch here to Bretts. Curveball in there for strike one. That's a good pitch right there. Starts at the top, goes to the bottom. Can't get much better about that. Something these Liberty Hill pitching staff has been doing all year has been using that curveball in all counts, especially Sherburn in his last game against Rouse. Able to use that curveball to really bail him out of some situations as that fastball is hit in the air to Jack Stavanella. Stavanella able to make the catch for out number three. And we'll head to the bottom of the fourth here, and we'll keep it right here as we like to thank our presenting sponsor of Vipe Live this spring, Academy Sports and Outdoors. For all the ways you love to play, Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to gear up and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your local Academy store. Gear up this spring at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Well, a good work back in there for Blaze. I mean, had the one little hit, but besides that, Really good pitching, and again, that one hit was just a little muscle into left field, kind of a no man's land. Pitching a great game, and I think the biggest thing is just trying to get these bats going. No, I mean, of course. I mean, Milam and Sherburn last week. I mean, Sherburn held Rouse to two runs. All Both came in that very bottom of the first inning after a little rough start from the Panthers. But then, I mean, if you don't gain run support in baseball, and you're not going to get that loss on the mound, even if you help hold the team to one run. I mean, we see it happen in the major league level all the time. You'll see a staff ace such as Jacob DeGrom. I was about to say, that's hold a DeGrom stat right hold, there. <laughs> hold them to two runs, and the Mets still lose. I mean, you can't ask for anything more from a Cy Young winner. I think the good thing with the Panthers is they're not striking out a lot. They're putting the ball in play, and soon enough, it'll, it'll start coming. Just got to keep putting pressure on these uh, Timberwolves out here. 
And now at the middle of the lineup coming to plate, we'll have Dyer, Noonshwander, then Stavanoa. Panthers may be able to start something here in this bottom of the fourth inning and take the lead against these state-ranked Timberwolves. Here just joining us, I am Jason Hebner, joined alongside former voice of the Panthers, Jay Sanders, now at school at Oklahoma State, in town for this game. And I have, he has the honor of joining me, or I have the honor of joining him, let me no, say. You had it right the first time. <laughs> for this district matchup, Dyer now at the plate, facing Vaughn for the second time. First pitch to Dyer. Fastball swung on, hit out of play by Dyer. you've listened to Panther Sports here the last couple of years on Vibe Live, chances are you're listening to Jay Sanders, and I'm honored to be joined by him tonight. Second pitch to Dyer. So fastball in the dirt, brings the count to one and one. One one count for Dyer. Dyer the leadoff batter here in the bottom of the fourth, looking to get the Panther offense started. Pitch, that one, check swing. They called it a strike. One more, you got it! I think he said they win on it, so. That's the hard part without having a third base umpire. Is home plate's got to. That pitch from Vaughn. Grounded down the first base. Dyer will try to beat it out here. And he'll be unable to beat it out. A good fielding play on the mound from Vaughn there for out number one. And I will say one thing. Vaughn is very good at getting these choppers. I mean, they're... I've seen a bunch from the night. I mean, both both sides, I will say, Blaze done the same thing, but all the balls put in play by these Panthers have seemed to be just chopped. After that ground out to Vaughn from Dyer, he'll bring up the third baseman, Cade Noonschwander, facing Vaughn. Pitch. First pitch fastball at the letters for ball number one. You know, Noonschwander has had some great defensive plays tonight and will look to re reciprocate that success at the plate. Pitch. That fastball is high, works it to 2-0. and oh. Big thing is continue to work Vaughn's pitch count up. On, that one inside works it to 3-0. and oh. And Vaughn struggling to find the strike zone here against Noonschwander. On deck for the Panthers is Stavanoa as the as a Nunchwan will take a four pitch walk. Now Stavanoa, the Panther right fielder, will head to the plate looking to move over Nunchwander. The tying run on first base. Vaughn working from the stretch as he has all night with Noonschwander on first base. He'll pick him. Noonschwander back in time. A quick pick move. Very interesting. Liberty Hill doing a great job of staying, al staying alert there on the base pass as Vaughn has a great pickoff move. They've been able to get back every time. That pitch is fouled off by Stavanoa as the Timberwolf third baseman originally gave chase before that ball flew out of Panther ballpark here. Stavanoa now with an 0-1 count facing Vaughn in his second at-bat of the game. Vaughn takes his sign from Brett's, now set. Checks Noonchwander, goes to the plate. That fastball is called high, brings a count to 1-1. One and one. Something notable, I see Cash Durkin may be in a pinch hitting roll on deck in place of Chase Maxwell. Pitch to Stavanoa, runner goes. Stavanoa swings through it. Runner will be there in time, and Noonchwander will have a stolen base. Well, I'll tell you one thing that may go unnoticed there. <laughs> Ryder Hernandez just saved an extra base as he was running for that ball. I don't know where the second baseman, uh, Absec, for the Timberwolves was because Hernandez had to basically sprint across the diamond to go grab that pitch before it, or the, the throw from the catcher. Now 1-2 count Stavanoa, the pitch, it's fastball high, 
works the count to two and two. Absolutely right. A little, little bit of a wide throw there from Brett. Hernandez, a great play at shortstop to keep that ball from adding an extra base for Nunschwander. Stavano with a runner in scoring position, looking to tie this ball game with a swing. Pitch. That one outside. Stavano. Stavano oh, he said he went. Called out. I don't think there's any chance he went there. Coach Hutch will go talk about this one. There's no way he went. Field umpire called time. If we can appeal this to the field umpire, I think we get an overturn here. Well, I don't know what the call is there because I, I think Coach Hutch was trying to get there. They're saying the swing is what I think. Yeah, they, they're saying he swung, and there's yeah. no way Stavano swung on that one. Yeah, I think that one, that's got to be a check there. And that's a tough break for Liberty Hill, who now have two outs. And... Cash Durkin will get the pinch hit nod. I mean, Jason, I know you haven't been able to be at all the games this year, but Liberty Hill has just been unable to catch any breaks. I mean, just the baseball gods have not been on our side this year. Yeah, that's a that's a tough break right there. Um, big news or good news? They got Cash here. Got a big bat. Hopefully, he can start getting it going here. One swing can change this game, tie it up. With two outs now, he can just uh. Put something in play, get something a base hit, and probably gonna score that runner. My guess here is that Durkin will now be subbed in for Maxwell in left field. And he'll have a chance to tie this ball game facing Vaughn for the first time tonight. Two outs for Liberty Hill here in the bottom half of fourth. Looking to tie this ball game up here. First pitch to Durkin is low. Well, there's the count to one and oh. You're right, Jace Durkin with a big bat. Has started this district this district campaign a little bit slow, and he'll look to get hot tonight against the Timberwolves. That pitch. Let's hit out a play by Durkin. Uh, we should mention, in Durkin's last game against Rouse, hit that triple in the bottom of the seventh inning to score one and give Panthers some hope there. <coughs> they were just unable to convert in the bottom of the seventh inning. Excuse me. Well, you know, I'll, I'll take a triple right here. <laughs> I'll tell you that. I'll take a big triple. That'd be nice right here. Durkin now with a 1-1 one, one count pitch. That fastball blocked by Bretts. Noonchuan will hurry back to second base. Now with a 2-1 count. Vaughn taking his sign from Bretts. Now set. Checks Noonchuan at second base. Goes to the plate. That one grounded weakly to first base. Durkin running it out. And Hewitt will step on first base for out number three. We're heading to the fifth inning here at Liberty Hill. And you're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. I loved playing high school sports. I love the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, all the pageantry, and I wanted to keep playing. But I graduated. No colleges called, and neither did the pros. So, to stay close to the game I loved, I decided to become a high school official. You know, a referee. When I played high school sports, I learned the importance of integrity, good sportsmanship, and respect for the rules. Now as a high school official, I get to help model these same values to others. Maybe the colleges and the pros didn't call, but the kids in Texas did. And now, I'm enjoying the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, and all the pageantry of high school sports all over again. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Welcome back here to Liberty Hill, where Liberty Hill currently trails one to nothing here in the top of the fifth inning against the state-ranked Timberwolves. And Jace, we're lucky to really be playing this game tonight. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good way to put it right there. As <laughs> I tell you what, the hill last night was uh, something else. I don't think I had seen that before, but biggest thing is turf field. Nice, easy way to play this game. And obviously, as long as you take care of that mound, you're going to be good. And that mound is good here at Panther Stadium as we kind of avoided some of those pop-up scatter sh scattered showers today. 
so we're playing this 25-5A matchup regularly scheduled as Milam's first pitch to Sue I guess is low so about the nicest way I can put it there yeah, I just under the knees there 1-0 count Milam pitch that one Sue grounds and knocks Knox able to field it cleanly, make the throw over to Blay for out number one. Good job by Milam. Pitching to contact. I think a big thing, big thing here, get a quick inning. Get your guys back with the bats and try and put something together. He'll be down by one. Now hot at the plate. He had that triple in the last one on the little dinker. Milam working from the windup, facing hot for the third time tonight. At first pitch, curveball falls outside, and hot will have a 1 0 count. Like, like you said, Jace, uh, hot able to reach the last time in a little blooper to left field, and that'll be a ground ball foul down a third baseline. Nunchwander will go over and get it. Now a 1-1 count to Hot. Milam looking to retire the Timberwolves in order here. That pitch. Curveball. Tell you one thing, Hot's got a good eye. Neely will go call time and go talk to Milam. Milam may be a little upset on the mound here. Hey, he just he's trying to find the strike zone and just Right now it's just a little bit off of it. Yeah, right there. That's a good way to put it. Neely doing a good veteran catcher move, going to talk to his pitcher, calm him down a little bit, tell him to focus on this batter here. That pitch, fastball, over the plate, called high, brings the count to three and one. Milam will hope Hot will swing here. Hot does, grounds it over to Nunchwander, Nunchwander will field it clean, will throw across the diamond for out number two. Putting on a clinic. Tell you what, Nunchwander. I think he's missed the ball all night. And even the even the ones going foul, he'll still get them. Yeah, Nunchwander. I don't think he's made an official error this season. Wow. He's missed <laughs> a few hard plays in between the holes. You know, stuff so that won't be counted, would, as, would be counted as a hit. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Of course, Nunchwander, one of the best fielders on this very strong Panther team. Now with two outs here in the top of the fifth, Milam on the mound facing Absec. First pitch, curveball chased by Absec. Started in the zone and just fell out of it. That's the curveball right there. That's the one that Blaze wants to keep in his in his back pocket all night. And, uh, just showed it right there. Now an 0 1 count to Absic with two outs here. Milam winds up, delivers. That fastball a little bit low will bring the count to 1 and 1. I think he slipped out of his hand there. As, as soon as he let it go, he looked at his hand and was like, come on there. Got to get better grip on that. Now 1 1 count, that pitch, curveball. Oh. Bounces off of Neely's glove to the umpire and now get 2-1 count Milam pitch that one's hit out of play by Absec and that one may reach the parking lot I think the tennis courts are over there too so hopefully we'll be uh, getting some baseball now a 2-2 count Milam looking to retire the side with this one. That curveball, barely fouled by Absic. Man, I, I don't know if you could hear that on the crowd, Mike, but that was just nicked by Absic. I, I gotta tell you, I thought it was strike three. I was about to put the put the strikeout call on. We were gonna go back, but just nicked it. Now pitch from Milam. That one, a little bit outside, and now the count will be three and two to Absic with two outs here in the top half of this fifth inning. And that's one where if you catch a clean, you may get a shot at a strike, but... That pitch here, grounded right back at Milam through his legs. Leary able to feel it cleanly, make the throw to play. Four out, number three. A great play from Leary there, working to his left. And Jace, there's a reason he's a Texas State commit. Yeah, that's the reason right there. Good play all around. Got up the middle. Blaze kind of did a little jump up there, trying to put the glove on. May have nicked it just a hair to slow it down. and. A good stretch over there by Blade to get the out and get the bats out for the Panthers. 
If you're just joining us, we welcome you to this district matchup between your your Liberty Hill Panthers and Cedar Park Timberwolves. Cedar Park currently leading 1-0 to zero as we head to the bottom half of this fifth inning. And Jace, what have you seen from Adam Vaughn on the mound today for the Timberwolves, who's been able to help the Panthers to nothing? You know, the scoreboard doesn't show up, but I really want to say Blaze is much better than them. I really do. Uh, obviously, with the one nothing lead, I you almost can't say that, but I, I want to say Blaze has just done an outstanding job. And big thing is the hard hit balls against Vaughn are just going straight to people. I mean, when when you get those hard hits, you really want them to drop, and they're just not doing it right now. But I, I want. You know, I don't have the official stat book, but I want to say that Blaze has had less runners on base uh, than Vaughn. Oh, I think I could agree with that statement here. But, um, you know, Vaughn has done his job for the Timberwolves. The Timberwolves have had a few breaks in the field, and they're able to lead this game. Liberty Hill will look to respond here in these last couple of innings and will look to upset the state-ranked Timberwolves. In a much-needed district win for these, Timber for these Panthers, currently seated fifth, and as many of you know, only the top four go to playoffs. A win tonight would really help their chances of that. Blay, 8-9-1 eight, eight, here, so trying to get something going. Blay is the eight hitter. He'll start it off. That fastball is outside by Vaughn. I think you're going to want to try and make Vaughn hit the strike zone. Obviously, we've seen he can do it, but he's had some trouble, fi tr some trouble finding it. Absolutely. Second pitch from Vaughn here is a fastball. Blay hits it into right field. Right fielder going back on it. Able to make the catch. Four out number one. Well, uh, with the wind going out there and lefty batter, I don't think I'm going to put too much on that. That was a good hit. Just uh, going to get anywhere. Pitch may have been a little bit jammed by yeah. Blay. I can win patch if he got if he caught that clean. That was a good hit. But that first pitch, or that first pitch fly out by Blay will bring up Garrett Neely to the plate. Neely in his last at bat, hard hit to the shortstop, just right at Hernandez. Facing Vaughn for the second time tonight. I think it's worth noting as that first pitch fastball is low in the dirt, that Neely was actually the first uh, Panther hitter when we played at Cedar Park to get a hit off Vaughn, hit a little line drive into right field for a single. I'll tell you what, I'd take that right now. Neely there oh. hits it into left field. Left fielder going back on it. Able, unable to make the diving catch. Neely will head for two, and he'll be in there with a sliding double. Good contact by Neely. And two solid, solid at-bats from Neely with solid contact, and Liberty Hill has some momentum here. Now we're going to get a courtesy runner because he's the catcher, so Maldonado will get out there. Maldonado has been the courtesy runner all year. If you've been listening to us on Vipe Live here, you know when I, we have either Carson Riley or Garrett Neely reaches base, Ty Maldonado comes in to run. Maldonado, only a sophomore, has found his role on this team as he's kind of position locked right now with Leary at shortstop. I mean, you're, you're not going to start over a Texas State commit. No, you're not going to start over that. I mean, I don't think anybody's going to start over that, <laughs> especially when this guy's been a varsity player for the entire four years. Uh, big thing here, though, you got a guy on the second base, one out, and you got the top of your order up. And now that Texas State commit is at the plate, Ryan Leary will look to drive in the first Panther run of the night. Panther crowd. Corners, feeling corners are in here. Corners are in for, for the Timberwolves. Panther crowd has some energy for not the first time tonight, but definitely for an important moment in this game. That pitch to Leary grounded up the middle. Maldonado being waved home. We're on a play at the plate. Maldonado gets down, and he's going to be safe at the plate. <laughs> Liberty Hill has tied this game at one. After a Ryan Leary RBI single up the middle, Maldonado able to score from second base. That's a big thing right there. Big run, big run. You tie it. And, and worth noting here, Chase, Liberty Hill with all the momentum. Liberty Hill here looking to extend their now ball game is tied looking to add a lead here with Anna Thomas at the plate Ryan Leary on first base after the RBI single Vaughn first pitch to Thomas grounded up the middle Vaughn able to field it cleanly unable to throw it and Liberty Hill now will have runners on first and second after Vaughn 
misfire thrown to second base for that double play. And you know, I, I I saw that coming. When you get a bouncer to the pitcher and you got to turn it over play, that's one of the hardest throws to make to turn your entire body around and hit the guy on second while he's trying to go for the double play. That's a tough play to make. And uh, coach is going to come out and talk to him right now. And you know that Vaughn had to be excited when he got that ground ball. He just kind of rushed that throw, threw it into right field. Luckily, Absec, second baseman, was there. But now Liberty Hill, runners on first and second, will look to do some damage here in this very important district matchup. We may have a pitching change here as that's head coach Lanny Williams. But it looks like we will not. He'll head back to the Timberwolf dugout. Vaughn will remain on the mound and he'll bring up the senior committed to Tyler Junior College. Jackson Knox. Well, Jace, what do you want to see here from Knox? I hit. That's what I want to see. That's what I think that's the big thing. I want to see him put the ball in play. Hopefully get the ball through a gap somewhere. I don't care if that's an infield gap, an outfield gap. Just put it somewhere where the ball's going to drop and get some runs in. Runners on first and second. Thomas at first. Leary at second base for Liberty Hill. Senior Jackson Knox at the plate facing Vaughn for the third time. Vaughn will step off. He wants his signs again. I think he's a little flustered on the mound out there, Jace. Yeah, I think he threw that ball and he could tell in his face he was frustrated. First pitch to Knox. Fastball outside for ball one. You know, Knox, something he needs to do here is really he needs to make Vaughn throw a strike instead of chasing out of the zone where Vaughn could get a much needed pickup or so. I think that's the big thing is you get a pitcher flustered, you gotta make him throw a strike before you swing. That pitch to Vaughn or that pitch to Knox is fouled back. Will bring the count to one and one. Well, I say that, and then he gets a fast forward in the middle, and you got to swing at that. <laughs> I don't blame Knox for going after that one. Knox just a little bit under that baseball, and we know Knox. I mean, look at that gap in left center field, Jace. I mean, if he puts a ball in there, that could be two runs for Liberty Hill. Easy, two runs. It's weird. The center fielder playing a little right for Knox, facing Vaughn with a one-one count pitch. That curveball grounded a shortstop. Knox will rush to beat this one out. He'll be unable to. The Timberwolves able to turn a 6-4-3 double play on Knox and will head to the sixth inning. Liberty Hill able to tie this ball game up here in the bottom of the fifth. It looks like we're going to have a good game here, Jace. Yeah, I think that's the big thing. Uh, it was starting to get late, and so I'm glad the Panthers put the run on the boards. It's going to be a lot harder to put that run up in the sixth or seventh. Glad they got it in the fifth, and now you got to keep it at one and keep this game tied. And we'll take a quick, a quick 30 second break and be back with the action here. I'm Jason Heemner, joined alongside with Jay Sanders, and you're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VibeBYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Well, welcome back here to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball Field, where the Panthers were able to respond in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Jace, Milam's back on the mound. What are you looking for? Shut down inning. You got that run. Uh, I think Cedar Park did the same thing of kind of getting the shutdown inning after they got their one run. And Blaze can come out there, shut the Timberwolves down. Gets the, keeps the Liberty Hill momentum, I should say, as I feel like they got it right now. Yeah, absolutely right. After that inning, I mean, if Milan can shut down the Timberwolves here with the middle of the order in Hernandez, McDonald, and Verver, you have to like Liberty Hill's shot at this game. I mean, all the momentum right now, the Panther crowd's fired up. Milam, I'm sure, is fired up to receive that run support. And he'll look to extend or keep this lead game at one and head to the bottom half of the inning. First pitch to Milam facing Hernandez. That curveball hit hard down the left field line. A little bit of foul for Hernandez. I think Hernandez's eyes let out. That, that curveball just did not move on that one. It, it, that one kind of just stayed up top and Hernandez went a little bit too early, but I think that Milan's going to wipe the sweat off his brow and keep going. Oh, one counts to Hernandez. This pitch is a fastball. Finds the inside half for strike two. That's the pitch. You got it, Ryder. Come on. You're just joining us here at Liberty Hill. Get ball game tied at one. Top of the sixth inning. Liberty Hill looking to upset the state-ranked Cedar Park Timberwolves. This pitch from Milam. Curveball off the zone. Really good chase pitch there. Yeah. You get an 0-2 count, uh, you're going to see that curveball. I mean, that's just that's just going to gonna happen. And obviously... 
That allows Ryan to sneak in a fastball in one of these opportunities. Milam will look to retire Hernandez with this one. Had a fastball. That ball hit hard into the net. Down the right field line. And Hernandez will stay at a 1-2 count. One two, 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 one, two, two, Hernandez. Milam working from the windup. Delivers. That fastball in the dirt. Good block by Neely with no runners on base. Now a 2-2 two, two count. Blaze Milam, the freshman pitcher for the Panthers, looking to retire Hernandez, the senior shortstop for the Timberwolves. That curveball, a beautiful 12-6 curveball by Milam, and he'll have a little sh he did a little dance as he walked off the mound there, Jace. Yeah, he, he said, "I'm Johnny Cueto out here throwing curveballs, and I'm going to shimmy my way out here." I mean, and I think he deserves that. That was a tremendous pitch. When you, I, I'd say any major leaguer would be happy to have that curveball. Yeah, when you strike out the MVP for the Cedar Park Timberwolves, you're going to have a little bit of confidence as he'll face McDonald now. Oh, that fastball. Beautiful on the outside half. I think uh, Milam got some extra energy in that one. He was excited about that strikeout and just fired it down there, challenge pitch, and he said, this is my game. Milam looking dominant in these last few innings. This pitch here, fastball in the dirt, you know. Try to throw a little change up there, may have slipped on him a little bit. 1-1 one, one count. Literally, I think the only thing with Milam that I could point out that I've seen that he does a often is he loses his grip. But that's a sign of having a great grip as a pitcher. That means it's coming out of your hand cleanly. And this pitch to McDonald. Fastball high. He wants a new ball. Yeah, I don't think he likes that one. I think it slipped out too many times. <laughs> Nearly thought he was pointing to something behind us here. Yeah. Kind of confused his own catcher there. Nearly was like, ah, I got to go get an out. It's behind yeah. me. Now a 2-1 count for McDonald. A Timberwolf cleanup hitter. Milam, pitch. That fastball, a little bit outside. Milam will look to attack the strike zone on this 3-1 count. He's keep, she can't get the grip right, I think. He keeps going with the curveball. She can't get it. Maybe trying to overthrow a little yeah. bit here. As here's the pitch from Milam. That one finds the zone. McDonald hits it into right field. Foul oh. ball. Dang. Panthers got a little bit of a break there. Yeah. As McDonald hit that ball to the wall. Just a little bit foul here at Panther Ballpark. Well, I said earlier the wind would help lefty batters and help hitting towards uh, right field. Well, guess what? Um, that one hurt him because the wind started to blow the ball towards foul territory too much and uh, that ball looked like it was going to be fair all the way but went took it foul. Now a full count. Jace, I'm, you know what, I'm going to say it. I'm looking for a curveball for Milam here. You know, I don't think we can expect anything less. The only thing I could think was be a high fastball, try and get the eye level changed. Milam winds up, full count to McDonald. Curve, oh, change up <laughs> off the plate. Just fooled McDonald. i tell you what. He's got two down right now, and he is working out there. That one got to a 3-2 count, added out a 3-1, came back, got the K. I mean, he's just working out there right now. That was an absolutely phenomenal changeup just off the plate where McDonald has to chase it, and it's almost in that area where you really can't hit the ball. He, no. I mean, great pitch from, from Milo Neris. He faces now a Verver, who grounds to Leary. Leary will make the throw to first base. Four out, number three. Your Panthers here have all the momentum. And we're going to head to the bottom of the sixth inning. We'll take a short break here, and we'll be back as the Panthers try to take the lead in the bottom of the sixth. You are listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vipe Live. Honey, isn't it amazing? What? The, the sacrifice, the dedication, the grit. I mean, they really set an example, don't they? Oh, well, no question. Today's high school athletes are truly special. Not the athletes. Well, who? The officials. Oh, Today's student-athletes are truly special, but there's something pretty great about the men and women who officiate their games, too, like the way they're giving back to their communities. Officiating is a terrific way to stay in shape, meet new people, and stay connected to the game you love. But the biggest reason of all? We need more qualified high school officials here in Texas. And without them, the rest of us would have a whole lot less to cheer about. High school games need officials, High school sports need you. We bring you back here to Cedar Park, or to Liberty Hill High School, where Liberty Hill is playing the Cedar Park Timberwolves a little bit early from that ad break, as Jason and I were discussing how this game is so important for these Liberty Hill Panthers. If they can win the win against the Cedar Park Timberwolves, currently tied for first in this District 25-5A, it would really propel them and give them momentum heading into this back half of the second half 
of this district campaign. All right, big thing here. You got the bottom of the sixth up. You put a run. Blaze Milam's at 79 pitches, so he can come out here and try and finish this game. You get a run up here. You give him a one run lead. Blaze Milam will turn into a closer out here. Also noted that the Cedar Park is facing in there. It will be there six, seven, eight hitters. So Milam will definitely come back on the mound if we can get a lead here. At first pitch to Dyer, fouled back for strike number one. Panthers, four, five, six in the order. That'll be Dyer, Noonschwander, Stavanoa. We'll look to score here in the bottom of the sixth inning and go out in the top of the seventh and retire the Timberwolves. This pitch from Vaughn, curveball outside, brings the count to one and one. Vaughn, set, pitch. That fastball outside works count to two and one. You know, Jace Vaughn has hit that spot a lot tonight, has not gotten the call once. Yeah, I, I think I'm starting to get to him. He didn't look too happy about not getting it. That one in that same spot, Dyer fouls it, nearly hits Nunchwander over in the on-deck circle. You know, I really want to say that that's his pitch that he usually gets with the umps, and this one he's not getting it. He's a well frustrated. But now a 2-2 count to Dyer, the sophomore. We'll look to start something here for the Panther offense. This pitch, that's outside. Works the count to full. You saw it there, Jace. Vaughn upset on the mound. Yeah. He, he's been asking this umpire all, all night, where's this pitch? Is it outside? Is it up? You know, let me know. i got to find the strike zone. Pitch to Dyer. That one's low. Dyer will jog down to first base. Liberty Hill with a leadoff base runner here in the bottom of the sixth inning where they will look to score a run and take the win here against the state-ranked Cedar Park Timberwolves. Currently ranked fifth in the state after a very strong preseason. Carried into that district play. Fell last Tuesday to the Leander Lions, where they tied with first in the district. Liberty Hill will look to upset him again here. Now at the plate, Cade Noonschwanner shows bunt. Will lay it down. Hard hit to first base. And now Dyer will be at second base. That was a hard fastball. <laughs> Noonchwander just said, I want to put the bat out here. I hope this stays fair. And Well, it, it did, and he hit it just enough speed to get that runner second base and dire. You know, and Liberty Hill going to play the odds game here. They're going to elect to take that out, move the runner into scoring position, and hope that Stavanoa and Durkin can drive him in, maybe, and take the lead here in this crucial game. Stavanoa at the plate for the Panthers. Big thing here is going to be contact. Pitch from Vaughn. Grounded up like the that. middle. <laughs> Nunchwander being waved, or Dyer being waved around. Dyer with great speed. He's going to score, and the Panthers will take the lead. Two to one here against the Cedar Park Timberwolves. Dyer, a running back in football. As soon as that ball got through, I know he, I knew he was going to score. Oh, yeah. He said this is my game to go score the run, and sure enough, he does. Now Liberty Hill up two to one here in the bottom of the six. We'll change that for you all scoreboard here. Been a little exciting game. We've, me and my boy Jay Sanders have gotten a little caught up in ourselves. Now, Stavin Noah on second base, advancing to second base on the throw home. Liberty Hill looking to extend their lead, get a few safety runs here. I'll tell you that middle part of the order today working great for the Panthers. Vaughn, first pitch to Durkin. That fastball low, good eye by Durkin to watch it. Big thing here, another one. You got a guy on second base, you got Durkin at the plate, and a uh, little frustrated pitcher out there. You can probably Try and get another one in. And two runs for how Milam's pitching tonight would be amazing. That pitch hit in the left center field. That ball's going to fall. Stavanoa will score easily on this one. Durkin will head for two. He'll have a play at second base here. He's going to be safe at second base. A great series of hitting here by the Liberty Hill. And their Panther fans are fired up here. Oh, Panther fans, I'm fired up. What a game. That's a great smack by Cash Durkin. And I got a three-run lead for a pitcher who's dealing. Man, I'm liking our odds right now. Well, I mean, pa Liberty Hill looking to extend this lead. I mean, they've just caught fire, and they're going to look. I guarantee you, Milam back on the mound for that seventh oh, yes. inning, as dominant as he has looked tonight. Now Blay at the plate, looking to drive in Durkin. First pitch from Vaughn to Blay. Fastball, call the strike to Blay. Now Blay, just looking to make contact. Give the Panthers a chance to extend this lead and extend their safety net for Milam heading into the top of the seventh. Pitch. 
That curveball way outside. Brings the count to one and one. Jays Panther Bats have come alive this inning, and Liberty Hills in a situation to win this ball game now. Ah, that's a big thing. Big, big, big. Vaughn checks Durkin. Throws it a plate to Blay. That fastball inside brings the count to two and one. Bretts will go talk to Vaughn here. Vaughn, I mean, obviously flustered. Because it looks like they're, they're going to call time on the field here to let Durkin okay. give away his, or give, get his sliding pad, it looks like. I don't know if you can, y'all can see that on the camera, but the center fielder is shading Blay to the left center gap as a lefty. He's got a, a ginormous hole out there in right center. He can just smack one right there and then get a double easy. Let's pitch to Blay. It's fouled back by Blay. And I mean, I'm us with you. Now, Durkin is the exception here. Durkin does go he opposite. He does go field, opposite, yes. Which the center fielder played after Durkin hit it by him. But Blay, I mean, Blay is a straight pool hitter. I mean, we saw the, 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 the hit earlier where he flied out to the line. He's I got mean, he, he has a lot of green grass out there in right center field. Vaughn checks Durkin. Pitch to Blay. That one, curveball, swung on and missed by Blay. And I'll be out number two here for Liberty Hill. And that one just fooled him right there. Curveball, drop. Thought he was a fastball. And got but, in front. but it brings to the plate Garrett Neely. Neely's been hot at the plate tonight. Well, and like you said, he got the hit to start this earlier. And he started the one against Cedar Park in the first game. Well, he did in the, this game, too. He got the double, and then his uh, courtesy runner ended up scoring the tying run. Yeah, now, now Neely will face Vaughn for the third time. First pitch to Neely. Fastball hit high into right field. Right fielder going after it. That ball may blow out of here. No. Right fielder able to make the catch for out number three, but not before Liberty Hill able to score two runs and take the lead. And we'll stay right here as we head into the seventh inning where Liberty Hill will attempt to shut down the Timberwolf offense and take this District 25-5A ball game. Man. Jace, nobody else but... Blaze Milan will be on the mound right now. Yeah, I had nobody. I don't think that anybody had a shot of being on the mound after the way he's pitched tonight. The swagger he had last inning by just running through the middle of the order. Running through. Two strikeouts and a little ground out to uh, shortstop Leary. I, I just... You don't have anybody else up, uh, up here but with this man. And I, I think the biggest thing, he's a freshman. He's a freshman and he's about to do what we hope here, finish out this game and can pitch a complete game, one run against Cedar Park, who's state ranked and uh, probably one of the better teams in this uh, district. Yeah, I mean, Cedar Park, I mean. Maybe one of even the best teams in the region. I mean, yeah, preseason beat Lake Travis, the number one state ranked team in Texas, which is why they got their state ranking so high. I mean, Liberty Hill, I mean, looking to be a very good Cedar Park squad based off a great pitching performance from Blaze Milam. Milam will face the middle of the order for the Timberwolves. Six or eight, it'll be Robinson, Hewitt, Bretts. And if I remember correctly, Jace, I mean, I don't think they've gotten on all night. I don't think so. I can tell you, I, don't, I know Robinson has it. Uh, the only one I could think would be would be Bretts. Because did he have? Was he the one who kind of bounced that first hit up the middle, or was that or was that uh, Sue? That was Sue. That was Sue. I believe. So then, I think you're right then. And Milam. With the catcher now, we'll throw his last warm-up pitch, and we'll get started underway, folks, with the top of this seventh inning. The Liberty Hill, if they hold the Timberwolves here, will have the ball game, and will take the district win, advancing to 6-4 and four in district play, and upsetting the currently state-ranked Cedar Park Timberwolves. And I say upsetting, but this Liberty Hill team's very good, and if they play their best game any night, they can be a team in the state. Yeah, they just had some tough luck, but this game's showing. They're My a team to be reckoned with. Milam will face Robinson, working from the windup. First pitch, grounded to Leary. Leary, able to field it cleanly, will throw down to first. Four out, number one. Can't ask for anything more than that for a first pit, first batter here for Milam. Looks like we're going to have a... Uh, Looks like we'll have a pinch uh, hitter here. Tyler DeVolder. Tyler DeVolder. DeVolder actually started that first game. I uh, can't remember what he did, I mean, particularly at the plate. But 
If he's getting a pinch hit not, he's definitely capable at the plate here in this pressure situation for the Timberwolves. Well, and then he got a lefty. I think that's a that's probably a big reason is you're going to have back-to-back -back lefties here for Milam to face to try and f close out this game. Milam, first pitch to DeVolder. Grounded hard, foul, down the third baseline. Man, Cedar Park coach, uh, could not make the play there, but Noon just wanted to right there to back him up a little bit. You know, Coach Laney <laughs> Williams for the Timberwolves actually played double-A baseball for the Cubs. Wow. I know, I mean... You'd, you'd expect a little more fielding over there at the third base coach. Yeah. Well, water, I got a beat. <laughs> Milam here, working with an 0-1 count to DeVolder. That one. Called off the zone. Maybe. Yeah. I don't think he swung, but yeah. called a 1-1 count now. I mean, after the Stavanoa check swing, I'm going to check it. So, I'm going to check. That's fair play there. Now, 1-1 count to DeVolder. Liberty, or Cedar Park down to two outs remaining. This pitch from Milam. Curveball slipped a little bit. And now 2 1 count. I'll tell you one thing. Milam as a freshman, he is cool, calm, and collective out there on the mound. That's something you can't teach. He was the same thing against Rouse. Went all seven innings, just looked dominant out there, just like he's had tonight. This pitch is grounded to Knox. Knox fields it cleanly, throws it to Blay. Four outs, number two. Liberty Hill now, one out away from beating the Timberwolves, and you can just tell this team is excited. Well, I'll tell you what. What a fitting end this would be if you could just strike them out right here. What a fitting end. You get the ground ball to the two seniors in Leary and Knox, and then you come out here and have the dominant freshman pitcher absolutely just blow by Trey Hibbets. Pinch hitter. Does look like Trey Hibbets at the plate. And Hibbets will look to save the Timberwolves here as Milam is looking to go the distance. Really a sh excellent performance. Please stay with us post-game. We'll have a little bit of analysis for this amazing baseball game it's been. Milam, first pitch to Hibbets. Fastball, strike one. Well, there's strike one. That's a good start. You get that first pitch strike, you're going to get a good results. 0-1 count to Hibbets. Liberty Hill looking to close out the Timberwolves here. That pitch, swung on and missed, a curveball. Two strikes, I tell you what. Put this one in the dirt, make him swing on a curveball. Now an 0-2 count, Milam looking to retire Hibbets and absolutely dominate the Timberwolves I'm going for this district win. He steps ball. off. I'm going curveball right here down. If he doesn't take it, I'm going high fastball, see if he can get it. I'll take a fastball high here. Milam, pitch, fastball outside, grounded weakly. They'll let it go foul, smart play. Hibbets running out of the box there. Hibbets just barely getting that off the end of yeah. the bat there. Staying alive here for the Timberwolves. All right, I think we see high fastball. I really want to see it. He got the strikeout early, early in the game here, but we hadn't seen it since the top of the second inning. Hadn't seen it. Really like to see it here. A lefty, you got a good shot. I'm getting a swing and a miss. Hold on. An 0-2 count for Milam. He'll look to retire Hibbets on this one. Milam, pitch. Fastball. Oh, man. Right on the inside part of the plate, home plate umpire didn't see it how we did. I don't think you saw it how most of the Panther fans did too, as they were ready to celebrate. That would have been a fitting into this ball game for Milam, but he'll look to get Hibbets with this pitch. I think he wants to strike out just as bad as everybody else in here. Milam winds up, pitch, fastball, low inside, overthrew it a little bit. He'll have a 2-2 count, no need for Milam to be concerned here. Two run lead, two outs. Just get Hibbets here any way he can. It's like a high fastball here. Milam, pitch here. Curveball. Long on and missed by Hibbets. Liberty Hill will win this district ball game on a strong pitching performance from Blaze Milam. Liberty Hill able to upset the Timberwolves tonight in just an amazing baseball game that we're lucky to be able to play against these Timberwolves on this stormy. Friday evening. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back here with this post-game segment. Please stick around. Jace Andrews and I will have some analysis of this I got some amazing, analysis, right. <laughs> of this amazing base <laughs> baseball game. We'll be back here in two minutes. Yeah. I loved playing high school sports. I loved the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, all the pageantry and I wanted to keep playing, but I graduated. No colleges called and neither did the pros. So 
To stay close to the game I loved, I decided to become a high school official. You know, a referee. When I played high school sports, I learned the importance of integrity, good sportsmanship, and respect for the rules. Now as a high school official, I get to help model these same values to others. Maybe the colleges and the pros didn't call, but the kids in Texas did. And now, I'm enjoying the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, and all the pageantry of high school sports all over again. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Welcome back here to Liberty Hill, where we are. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Hutch. Where we are back here after Liberty Hill able to win this district ball game, a much needed win for the Panthers. Now going to six and four in district play, and now will increase their chances. Now increase their chances of making the playoffs as we get closer to that playoff season. Jace, you're here for the whole ball game. What did you see tonight that was just amazing for Liberty Hill? Blaze Milo. Oh my goodness. I, I mean, I don't think you could have asked for a better pitch game from the freshman out there. I got to say, I don't think I've seen a freshman pitch that well in a long, long, long time. And man, I'm just, I'm just impressed. I, you know, I said it when I saw him first time. I was very impressed, and man, did he, he made me so much more impressed tonight. Uh, just the swagger he has with the confidence. I mean, I don't see this kid losing much. You know, Milan for sure is a gem for this Panther program. Coming in as a freshman in a very strong, I mean, folks, this is a very strong District 25-5A. He has come out and made three or four district starts, made a district relief appearance in almost every game, and has just been amazing to watch on the mound and he's only a freshman like you said Jace I mean that kid is going somewhere in oh, baseball he's going and he, I mean it's gonna be it's great to see him tonight and it will be great to see him in these next couple of years yeah I I, I gotta be honest I will literally come back just to watch blaze that kid is just incredible the movement the speed I said at the beginning he may not have the most speed but I think I was wrong he may have the most movement that curveball I mean, I didn't see it in pre-game, in pre but that, that, that sucker moves. It moves so much. You so, know, so much. You know, Blaze for, could be the best pitching prospect out of Liberty Hill. Since oh. Wyatt Cheney, you know, you've seen Wyatt Cheney. He goes uh, to Oklahoma I mean, State yes. where you attend. And, I mean, if Blaze could be like Wyatt Cheney here in a few years, as many of you know, Wyatt Cheney, part of that 2018 regional finals team, he could pitch 92, throw an absolute 85, 12-6 curveball. I mean, my limit of a couple of years, if he gets some velocity, he gets some experience on that mound. I mean, he'll be almost untouchable. Uh, he was untouchable tonight. I mean, if you think about it, you want to think about the hits that he let go. You got the dive by Chase Maxwell. That was, that the, one was the one run. That was the one run. The one run. Yeah. I mean, it's just two dingers. The, I think the only good hit was by Sue. And that was the little... Uh, Ground ball up the middle. Yeah. yeah. That was the only, I, I'd say, well-hit ball that probably deserved a hit all night. I, 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 you know, I'm obviously those, those count the same hits. You know, you muscle them in, they're going to count. But the biggest thing... They weren't hit all that well. They just kind of dropped in the right spots. And when they weren't dropping in the right spots, uh, he was striking them out half the time. So it's, it's pretty incredible. Uh, we'd like to thank Academy one final time for being Vipelize for Zinc sponsor this spring. For all the ways you love to play, Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to gear up and have fun out there. Get free shipping on, on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your local Academy score. Gear up this spring at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Well, Jace, I know you drove down here for this game, and you saw a gym tonight. Well worth it. What, <laughs> well worth it. What are your final thoughts tonight, and what do you want to say to this, those viewers listening as we move into this later half of the second half of district play? Well, I think the first thing I want to say is uh, that, that's a great way to end the game. You get the two seniors getting the ground balls right to them, great plays, Larry and Knox, two committed seniors, I will say. I mean, then those guys have been on varsity all four years. They've been just staples of the community. <laughs> They're guys that you, you want to see out there, and I'm, I'm so happy that they got to get those ground balls against a big game. And then the strikeout from the freshman, I, I, I just got to say that that's what, what a fitting way to end the game. But uh, just a lot of things went right for the Panthers, and um, just keep it going. Uh, keep those bats in the – what we saw in that sixth inning, keep that going. That, that was the strong bats coming out alive. And like you said, these Panthers, when they play the right way, they're a team to be reckoned with by any team. I mean, they just beat – one of, if not the best team in the district, and I guarantee one of the best teams in the region. So, uh, 
Panthers come out of here and get a get a playoff spot. They're gonna be one to be. Uh, you're gonna be one you don't want to see in the playoffs. I'll just say that. So I'm excited to see where these go, and I keep the fingers crossed these bats keep coming. I am one that's very excited to see how this Panther team finishes district play, and hopefully we make the playoffs and we can make a little run in those playoffs. We'd like to invite you to join us next Tuesday night as the Liberty Hill Panthers take on Marble Falls at Marble Falls. I know many of you may not want to make that that hike out to Marble Falls about 45 minutes here from Liberty Hill. So we'd like to invite you to join us here on Vipe Live. I'll be there. We'll have the play-by-play. -play. We'll be live at about 6.50. I'd like to thank you all for joining us tonight. I am Jason Hebner, joined alongside my good friend, Jay Sanders. I want to thank my QA, uh, Nate Nunez, back in the Vipe Live headquarters, as Jay Sanders coined that phrase. And I'd like to overall thank you all for listening tonight, and have a good rest of your night. Thank you.